Are you working in Zoom, uh, specifically Zoom meeting, and you're curious about if you need a passcode or not? Well, this is a part two to my video. I'll link to part one all about Zoom meeting and passcodes. But this one specifically has to do with passcodes and the waiting room in Zoom meeting. I'm going to talk about how they are actually connected. I know they sound completely different in our head. And we give you a couple examples of different cases for when you need a passcode and when you might not. Before we get into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I write videos all about YouTube, event production, hybrid event, production tips, show calling, you name it. Probably I'm making a video about it. If you also like more free content, I am the co-host of the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. And every week we sit down and dive deep into an event topic. Again, this is everything from show calling to how to build a good budget to how to write a good event proposal to Instagram marketing. And we get to bring in other event pros to share about their passions and their expertise. We drop new episodes every single Wednesday. So listen wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, so once again, if you missed it earlier and scrubbed through, uh, this is the part two to Zoom meeting passcodes. Uh, please watch Zoom part one. I've linked it up here. I'll link it in the description as well. I'll link it in the description as well. But without further ado, so passcodes we've talked about are something that you can have on in a Zoom meeting. It is often just an additional security feature, which is great if you are worried about Zoom bombing or people crashing your meeting who are not wanting, you don't want them to be there. A Zoom passcode is a really great feature to use. Now, I often have clients who don't want to use a passcode because they think it's another layer that their attendees need. I talked in video one, but if you have it, usually the Zoom link, if you're sharing a link to people, it'll just embed the passcode in the link. So the only time someone would need the passcode is if they were manually typing in the Zoom meeting number to their tablet or their phone or maybe their computer. But most of your attendees are going to join with the link. So big caveat, if you decide you don't want a passcode, and this is how it impacts the waiting room, you are not allowed to turn off the waiting room. Now, why, why might you want to turn off the waiting room? Well, so let's say we're doing a presentation in Zoom. It's a workshop or something, but we're using Zoom meeting. And it would be nice to have a waiting room because we want to make sure we don't let anybody in until we're ready for them. My speaker's ready. It's time to start the session. I open the waiting room, meaning I'll start admitting people to the meeting. I'm admitting, admitting, admitting. But maybe I also have to help the speaker share their slides or play some music as people come in. And so it can be really nice to first have the waiting room on, holding people back. But once you're ready, it's really nice to disable the waiting room so I don't have to continually click or have someone on my team click admit to meeting, admit to meeting for everybody who pops into the waiting room. This is especially helpful if you have like an all day event happening and people are hopping in and out. If you can just disable it once you're ready for people to be in the meeting. But the kicker is Zoom will not let you disable the waiting room if you don't have a passcode. So again, not the end of the world, but just know you can't disable it. So you would, if you do not use a passcode on your Zoom meeting and you do have a waiting room, you have to keep the waiting room on. There's no way to turn it off. You are stuck manually admitting people to your meeting. Now, if it's like a smaller meeting and again, you, or a smaller event, and this isn't a big issue for you, you're, you're fine. But I could see this for the case where I would find this really annoying is if I was hosting like a 300 or even a hundred person workshop. If I'm hosting a hundred person workshop in Zoom meeting and I constantly have people coming and going, I am gonna have to have someone who is just watching the waiting room to let people in. And if you are, your speaker is also a co-host, they will also see those pop-ups on their screen that say, you know, Logan Clements is in the waiting room. Two people are in the waiting room. Three people are in the waiting room. Anyone who's a co-host would see those pop-ups. So it's just a little annoying, but let me just show you where to do it in Zoom. Again, I did this in my part one. So here, when you're creating your meeting, you have the option to either do a passcode and a waiting room. So if you see, if I check no passcode, you can also check no waiting room, but wait, here's the message that gives me. You must have at least one security option. This is why people, if you have your waiting room on, Zoom will not let you turn it off because it is the only security feature that you have on. Can I say that again for the people in the back? <laughs> you want to make sure if you if it's important to you to be able to turn the waiting room off, you need to have a passcode. They do have this third option, which is like require authentication to join. If you are using a, uh, doing like an internal event at a company that always uses Zoom, this one is a great workaround. Then you don't have a waiting room or a you can use a waiting room and the required to join. Then it should let you turn off 
your waiting room if you want, because you still have one level of security. But I rarely have a client who wants me to turn this on because they don't think all of their attendees will have Zoom, nor do they want it to like pop up and make them sign into their Zoom account. So just know if you have nothing checked, you're going to see this option and you, you must have one of the options selected. So for my personal opinion, if I am personally hosting an event, I always do passcode and waiting room. Gives me flexibility. Again, when I send, if I hit save on this, you will see for the link, it already embeds the password in it. Password, and it has a lot of gobbledygook, but that's the password in there. So if I'm sharing this link with my attendees, they don't have to enter a password, really. They just click that link and it auto has the password in there for them. This is why I talk about intentionality when it comes to events, and especially with virtual events for knowing what technology is right for you. These might seem like little minute details, but they are very important and really helpful if you can think through these processes of like, why do you want a waiting room? Why do you not want a passcode? Do you ever want to turn the waiting room off? To make sure that it aligns and isn't like a headache at your next virtual meeting or virtual workshop. But again, context, this is all using Zoom meeting. And that brings me to the end of this video. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. This has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.